your husband's death yes. apparently was a watershed for you. You were a different person before mm -hmm. that time? I'm sure I was, yeah, very much so. Uh, I don't think I ever anticipated that I would probably ever even work again. You know, once I married, I felt that I would uh, be involved in the raising of a family. Uh, my, my first husband was very bright. He was going to go to law school. And he was killed three weeks before he got out of the Marine Corps. So it was a definite watershed. It was, I think maybe I would have been a woman who today, at my age, probably would be wondering, what, is, what are they talking about? You know, ERA and, and women mayors and all. I probably would have. And I could always understand that there's a feeling there on the part of some women, because I wouldn't have been that way until I found out what it was like to get out there and have a college degree know exactly how you were raised and what it was like to go to stores and use a credit card and shop and so forth and just expect, you know, oh, this is me and because I'm shopping, I'll pay my bill. I suspect you're and selling being, yourself a little short. No, no, I'm not, really. I really am not. And finding out what it was like, you know, to, because we lived away in other cities during the service, to even try to establish credit. I mean, it wasn't done in those days. And I think <clears throat> many of those things awakened me, as you say, a watershed to a whole world that I had probably been very sheltered from. And it was a watershed. I don't want to spend our whole discussion on ancient history, but it's such a fascinating <coughs> story. Most people want to move forward. Yes. It is such a fascinating story how you and the late Mayor Daly mm -hmm. originally met. J just walk us through that one. In his office, he calling you who right. had well, no I credentials had, I, had worked, I had worked in the Kennedy campaign, and I was a paid staff member. And uh, I would see him at various functions, but I was certainly no big cog in the, in, the, in the machinery of either the Democratic machine or the Kennedy campaign. I had a good job, uh, and, but I was no big political pro. But I would be at events where I would see him, you know, and he was the mayor and I was this person, that's all. And then uh, John Kennedy invited Kathy and me to sit in the president's box for the Army Air Force game in that November 1st of 1960. And uh, the Mayor Daly was in that box. And it was very hard to get in that box. This was not just a little box. <clears throat> this was the big one with the seal of the President of the United States and the little gate to get in and the whole bit. And that kind of gave you a credential yeah, in his Yeah, it, it gave me one. It shocked me as well. I, might, you know, I was very surprised, but that was very nice. Eventually, though, he did call you into his that's office. That's correct. We met at a church function about a month after that, and that's where my former pastor, who is now dead, introduced me officially to the mayor. The That's how that came about. The question remains, why? Why you? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've asked myself that a hundred times. And then in, in trying to be politically um, frank, I asked myself if, you know, one, I knew I had done a good job in the anti-poverty program. Two, I was a good commissioner. And then after that, all the political parts and things that he kept giving me. Those I, I could never dope out. I didn't know if maybe, you know, the fact that the Democratic Party didn't get seated in Miami, remember, because there were no women in the delegation at that convention, if maybe that was the impetus to really push, you know, women. And <clears throat> because I was the one first up there, I was the one that got pushed the most. I really never knew. But we did have a very nice relationship. However, once you were elected, there seemed to be a falling out with the rest of the Daly family. There seemed to be us. Why? I don't know. I'll never know. I will never know. You encouraged Ed Burke to run against... No, I did not. Mm -mm. The story I have heard is that you encouraged Ed Burke to run against... Others did. Richard Daly. Others did. The son of Mayor Daly. Mm -hmm. And I thought perhaps that that was mm -mm. the crux no. of the friction between your family and his. And it had, begun, it and had begun before that anyway. It had begun. Uh, no, I did not suggest to Alderman Burke that he run, nor did I pick up a phone and talk to anybody prior to the decision of the Democratic Party, not a soul. And if you recall, I had, that was around the Thanksgiving holiday that they were making those decisions and sleep making, and uh, I had had some cosmetic surgery done on some cysts and so forth around my eyes, and I was not even available when they made that decision, nor did I talk to anybody or even suggest it. I did not. Nonetheless, you're willing to admit that there is animosity. After the endorsement, then I did back. But see, I'm not a member. I was not a member of the Democratic Party Central Committee. I had no role in that. 
And while mayors had the great say in the past, because Mayor Daley had been chairman of the Central Committee, I was not. I was the mayor. And I had no role in that at all. It became a, an issue, and it sort of became a PR issue. She's picking on them, boom, boom, boom. And that sort of festered. But it, there was no picking, none. Did, did it hurt you? Yes, sure did. Do you blame the press? I, uh, no, I don't, I, no, I don't blame the press, because I think what was being uh, given, what the press was reporting was being given to the press. And uh, I mean, just a simple, uh, very quick story. Uh, I recall the Pope coming. And <clears throat> we did, made a lot of preparations, but due to the Constitution and separation of church and state, the church ran its own show. And all we really did was give support services of police, fire, et cetera, for the big crowds and crowd protection. And by law, we had to. There had been a suit filed in another city. And the day that the Pope was arriving, Dave Baum had a uh, radio call, and I think it was Dave Baum. And a member of my family called up and said, oh my God, you're getting creamed. Turn on that radio. I was at work. And I turned it on, and it was like a, an organized a uh, number of phone calls in. Do you know that Mayor Burns skipped Mrs. Daly? And it went on and went on, and why would she do that? And I hadn't skipped Mrs. Daly. I had nothing to do with it. So I hung up the phone and I called the Cardinal. And I said, Your Eminence, you know, I said, I, I can't believe this, but I said, you know, with the Pope coming in and we're all busy and everything, I, I explained to him what was going on. And it was, people were calling the building, calling City Hall, and it was terrible. And I said, would you mind very much putting out a statement that you're in charge of this and that I in no way had anything to do with this? And he said, oh, he said, Jane, I find that hard to believe. He said, he named, I think he said, Monsignor Rosemeyer, got in a car and drove to her home and gave her the itinerary, you know. And she said, well, that, you know, this is what he told me, that due to the fact that, you know, she had some once in a while arthritis, that she was not going to be out in the cold. Some and that she chose to go to Holy Name, which she went to, and five holy martyrs. But I couldn't pull that back. I mean, the next thing I knew it was in the papers that Mrs. Daly was scared. I had absolutely not a ticket to give out. Who started it? Who do you blame? Who wanted to hurt <coughs> you that bad? Well, let me say this, that the, there were people in that neighborhood, Bridgeport, and I'd not in any means saying that whole neighborhood that I had a problem. But it had been the home of the mayor for 75, 80 years. And I think that uh, it was very hard to give up. There wasn't a mayor of Chicago, really, in our lifetime or in our history, really, recently, recent history, that didn't come from Bridgeport. And that meant, you know, a tremendous amount of power. And you name the police superintendent, you know, and it, as it used to be said, they all came from Bridgeport. Uh, maybe they had moved to another neighborhood, but their father came from there. And all of a sudden, this diffusion of power didn't set well. <clears throat> didn't set well with any of them. And I think probably um, it catapulted itself. Because when people would say that I was picking on them, you have to understand that I viewed it as a whole city. And I came in there with a coalition of other groups. And I wasn't delivered by the machine. So if I said, look, we're going to give insurance to everybody, not just one family or one firm. That was viewed as picking. I didn't view that as picking. I didn't take it away from everybody. But if you've got two billion to give out, you say, well, we're going to share it with 10. Now, it would be normal, I think, actions of a mayor in trying to spread around that which you have to spread and not particularly saying, Bridgeport, I don't like you, but really sort of positively said, I, don't, I really don't care where you come from if it's good for us. Did but that, that ownership of the city and the city government had rested there so long that they couldn't understand that.